repairs and found himself in trouble. The second the, officer the implants came are falling out. Off. Uh, both fell to their deaths. Uh, Reapers, what's this good? It's your boy Laser. He's always working another scary reaction veil. He's in the scary content. So you to Lula if you guys are right there. Five eerie historical events experts struggle to explain. Guys, there's so many creepy ass fucking things that have happened in the past. But that's right. Enjoy scary content. You know what's scary features? Please let me You subscribe to the notification bell icon. I'll stream every night on Twitch. Go check out stream. Fucking amazing. Let's dive straight in this video. We count five eerie historical events that experts struggle to explain. There we go. But before we get into it, remember to hit that subscribe button for more awesome, creepy content just like this. Here we go. Oh, On August 16th, 1942, experienced pilots, 27-year-old Lieutenant Ernest DeWitt Cody and 34-year-old Ensign Charles Ellis Adams set off from San Francisco on Blimp Flight 101 on their way to Point Reed. Dude, when was the last time you seen like an actual blimp? I swear, blimps are cool as shit. I've always thought blimps were cool as fuck. I want to go and... I wish... Like, if there was one... I think there still is, like, one left that's still, like... I don't know if they still use it, but it's like... I want to go in a blimp so bad. I always thought blimps were cool as shit. Bring them back, man. Please. It seemed as if the first portion of the trip went smoothly. Revert the update. But an hour and a half after they passed initial it takeoff, in. Lieutenant Cody radioed headquarters <laughs> to report that their position was four miles east of the Farallon Islands. Oh, God, drip. After a brief standby, he then reported an apparent oil slick on the water. These were the last words ever heard from the crew of Flight 101. An additional three hours passed with no further word from the crew. One more message was received, but it wasn't from the crew of Flight 101. Instead, a report was given that the blimp had drifted approximately eight miles off course and had come ashore south of San Francisco in the hills of Daly City. No one was injured in the course of the blimp's landing in the middle of the street. Daly City officials immediately took action, attempting to free the crew from the derelict blimp. But Lieutenant Cody and Ensign Adams were not there. Navy personnel arrived on the scene and an official investigation was soon underway. There were several unusual findings. The door was found latched open and the safety bar wasn't in place, which wasn't a normal in-flight action. Black and white. Look at all these gentlemen gathered to see this historical event. Oh, interesting. The radio was still operational and there was plenty of fuel. It was also noted that two of the three life jackets normally stored on the blimp were missing, but crew members were required to wear vests while flying. A locked briefcase was also still in place. The briefcase contained top secret information but hadn't been tampered with. It was as if the two crew members had stepped out of the blimp and vanished into thin air. It was discovered that the blimp had been spotted by several ships and planes between 7 and 11 a.m. Some witnesses even claimed to have seen Lieutenant Cody and Ensign Adams in the gondola. Numerous theories have arisen as to what happened to the missing crew of Flight 101. Navy investigators thought that one of the crew members... Looks like... Why is it like... Looks like titties being mashed together. <laughs> ...members climbed out of the gondola to make repairs and found himself in trouble. The second the, officer... The implants are falling off. <clears throat> ...both fell to their deaths. <clears throat> Others thought that the blimp was spotted by an enemy submarine and the crew members were taken prisoner. Ultimately, there was no definitive answer. Lieutenant Cody and Ensign Adams were officially declared dead a year later. Interesting, bro. Interesting indeed. Netta Fenario, a 30-year-old occult practitioner, seemed to be running from something. Late in the summer of 1929, Fenario arrived at Iona, a small Scottish island, laden with enough luggage for an extended stay. She approached Mrs. McRae, a local landlady who rented rooms for visitors. Fenario settled in and a friendship soon developed between the two. Netta Fenario belonged to the Alpha Ed Omega. You're cute. What the fuck? The fuck is this? I thought a boner came up on my screen. <laughs> uh, an offshoot of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Fenario had a deep interest in ritual Ooh, magic, rituals. mysticism, and Cut divination. Yourself. She spent most of her days exploring the island that was her new home, while her nights were often spent delving into her various occult practices. This routine went on for several weeks before things took a sudden, ominous turn. On November 17th, Mrs. McRae awoke to find Fenario frantically packing her bags. Fenario told McRae that she had to leave immediately and return to London because several occult- This is- imagine just like- 
I don't know, you're sli sleeping, bro. You look outside and you see this uh, normal-ass lady. She looks pretty normal to me. I don't know what she's doing, but uh, she uh, ready to make out the wall right here. That's normal, right? Ooh, get that brick very... Uh, or that cement sticky. Practitioners were assaulting her psychically. Mrs. McRae didn't take Fenario's concerns too seriously at first, but she soon noted that all of the silver jewellery that Fenario was wearing had apparently tarnished black, seemingly overnight. Fenario flew into a panic when McRae informed her that no boats went to the mainland on Sundays. She would not be able to leave until the next day. Fenario retreated to her room but later approached McRae and told her that she had decided to stay on Onona after all. She then headed out to continue her exploration of the island. Fenario didn't return that evening, and it was two days later that her body was discovered. The location where she was found had a large cross cut into the ground, apparently with a dagger that was found nearby. I got a dagger. Don't fuck with me. Fenario's body was positioned on top of the cross, clad only in a black cloak. The doctor who examined her couldn't definitively determine a cause or time of death, so he stated that she died any time between the 17th and the 19th from either exposure to the elements or heart failure. These determinations didn't take into account the fact that Fenario had deep scratches on her body as well as the soles of her feet, almost as if she was running from something. While it's possible- demons. Possible that Fenario got lost in the night. Dude, I so would want to. Oh my god, give me a place like this, bro. I, I would so stay here for like a night. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah. This looks cool as shit. Give me my scythe, bro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my scythe and just burn this shit on fire. <laughs> I'm just imagining I'm standing on this, bro, and I'm just holding my scythe. If you're new to my channel, that's my whole brand. I'm just holding a scythe and I'm just standing on top of this and burning it on fire. Oh yeah. <laughs> Chaos! ...and died from exposure, fellow occult practitioners were convinced that she'd been attacked telepathically by an unknown individual. The mysterious circumstances of her behaviour, coupled with the bizarre state that her body was found in, leaves many unanswered questions that may never be solved. Ooh. Interesting. In 1938, an archaeological expedition sent to the Bayan Kara Ula Mountains on the borders of China and Tibet discovered several caves at the mountain summit. Within the caves were a collection of graves and the walls were decorated with elaborate drawings of the moon, stars and sun, along with sketches of individuals with severely elongated heads. The graves were soon excavated and the skeletons within were small in stature at around three feet tall, and the skulls were unusually large. Mm. Along with the bodies, a collection of stone discs were discovered. Each disc was approximately- Look at your face. Y'all saw like the blood on it? Approximately 12 inches in diameter and had a hole in the center. The surfaces of the disc were etched with two grooves that spiraled out of the center. See these? Amazingly, the grooves weren't just clean lines. Each one was actually composed <sighs> of tiny glyphs and carvings. A total of 716 stones were discovered and they were dated at approximately 12,000 years old. In 1958, the discs were handed over to researcher Tsum Um Nui. That boy's, that boy's locked in, bro. These scientists be locked in on these experiments. This motherfucker is like... Ready to solve the whole case of how fucking uh, the Holocaust started. As the boy in the striped pajamas, uh, I don't know why they burned my ancestors, but thank you, guy, for analyzing why the Holocaust happened. Was the Holocaust real? Do it. For examination and interpretation. After studying the stones for four years, Sum Um Nui claimed that he had deciphered the glyphs and that the story told of a spacecraft that had crashed near the cave system. He went on to say that the craft had been carrying the Dropa people. Tsumum Nui published his findings in 1962 and was immediately ridiculed for his work. The Dropa stones next found their way into the hands Don't of that. Russian scientist W. Saitsu in 1968. He conducted tests on the stones and discovered that they were made of granite along with high levels of cobalt and other metals, making it highly unlikely that primitive people would have been able to carve into such hard stone. In 1994, the Bampo Museum in Xi'an claimed to have destroyed the stones and that they officially didn't recognize their existence. There was no official record of a tribe called Dropa in the area of the cave formations or anywhere else in China. 
But when the stones were discovered, there were two tribes that lived in the area of the caves, the Hams and the Dropa. Attempts to identify the tribes as any other race failed. They weren't Tibetan, Mongol or Chinese. These individuals were thin with large heads and an average height of 4 feet 2 inches tall. What the fuck? Oh. There are numerous conspiracies surrounding the Dropa stones. Many of the names and sources associated with identification of the stones can't be substantiated. Still, there are photos that prove the stones once existed, and it's very strange that government officials would require that they be destroyed. The true identity of the Dropa stones remains a mystery. Looks like a mouth. Tell me that doesn't look like a mouth with the teeth. <laughs> The story of the Green Children of Woolpit is an ancient tale that has intrigued and mystified researchers since the 12th century. During the reign of King Stephen, two young children wandered up to the edge of a field in the village of Woolpit, England. Reapers working in the field discovered a boy and girl and were quite surprised I'm by the distinctive green hue of their skin. Bran. The children seemed distressed, babbling in a corn. strange language. The Reapers led the children into the village where they eventually found a home with landowner Sir Richard Decane at Wilkes. The immediate problem with the children was finding food they were willing to eat. They seemed to be starving, but when bread was offered to them, the children refused to eat, whimpering as if they didn't know what the food was. Only when freshly harvested, uncooked beans were offered did the children- This looks like tapeworms, really. <coughs> Look at all these parasites. These are tapeworms, right? This is this is gonna be my stomach, bro. After having uh, too much sushi, I eat sushi way too much. I gotta, dude. You know what's crazy? Like if you look at all these tapeworm like accidents with sushi, it's it's always like people that like had it like every fucking second of their life. Like I gotta cut down on that shit. I eat sushi way too much. I feel like too much of anything is bad. You know what I'm saying? Children willingly eat. They survived on nothing but beans for several months before they eventually developed a taste for other foods. Unfortunately, the boy became ill and died, but the girl grew robust and eventually lost her green hue. The ogres? She learned to speak <coughs> English and was then able to tell others her story. She claimed that her and her brother Ogre. were from the land of Ogre St. Bitch. Martin. She stated that in her land there was no sun and that everyone lived in an unending twilight. Everyone also had green-tinged skin like her. She claimed that she and her brother were tending to their father's flock one day when Ogres. they discovered a cave. They ventured in and wandered into the darkness for some time before exiting into a land of brilliant sunshine. It was a short time later that the Reapers found them. Many theories have been put forth about the green children of Woolpit. Their green colouring could have been due to hyperchromic anemia, a condition that occurs due to a poor diet that affects the hue of red blood cells. It was also suggested that the children were Flemish orphans from Fornham St. Martin, a location separated from Woolpit by the River Lark. The children would have spoken a strange language Ogres. and had been dressed in traditional Flemish clothing, presenting a strange vision to the Woolpit locals. Other theories suggest that the children were actually extraterrestrials who had accidentally been transported from their planet. While the whole truth of who the green children of Woolpit really were may never be known, their story continues to spark the imagination even in today's modern age. Little ogres, man. Ogre skin. This is my son. Before we get to that number, number one spot and take a look at a mysterious hammer that has baffled scientists for decades. Remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on channel notifications. That way you'll be completely up to date with all our latest content. Oh, shut up. Oh, that song. Found in London, Black Texas Steve. by Max Hahn and his wife in 1936, the London Hammer is an anomalous artifact that has stymied scientists and fascinated the curious. The hammer was found partially encased in stone that was dated at around 400 million years old, Bosses. making it impossible to have been created by ancient man, who didn't come into the picture until 200,000 years ago. You know what's crazy, bro? People think that we... Well, technically we did, right? We did come from monkeys, right? We did evolve from monkeys, right? People say we came from monkeys. Is that true? Just tell me I was once a monkey that jumped on the bed. Uh, the bed. These are pretty cool bananas. What? What? Oh, the hammer resembles those that were made Man, in the eighteen hundreds, but the head was created with an iron purity that is typically only seen in modern technology. 
The handle of the hammer had begun the process of carbonisation, and part of it had begun to form into coal. Since the hammer was found, there have been no signs of rust, further supporting the theory of an advanced technology having been used to create it. The stone encasing the hammer also demonstrated some peculiar traits, and it seemed to have combined with some sort of sheath or case that had been used to cover the hammer. All of this has led to several theories, the most popular being that of ancient astronaut theorists, who believe that the hammer is proof of an ancient yet advanced civilization that predates the appearance of modern man. This shit looks like fucking, oh my god. This shit looks like our fucking, I don't even know what this is. Why is this? I was going to say this looks like a fucking POI in like Fortnite, bro. <laughs> Hell no, what the fuck is this? Bunch of temples I see buildings oh, interesting others believe that the discovery suggests that modern man existed much earlier than first born and developed the necessary skills to create such a tool ultimately no one knows the answer but scientists continue to debate over the origin of the london hammer interesting bro is that it well, yeah. there's well guys that's it for the video i hope you enjoyed it which one of those historical events was the hardest to explain. If you enjoy scary content, use more scary views like the feature simple. You just have to do. I'll see you next one. Peace. Next time, money.